everybody, welcome back. Since it's like negative 10 outside, I thought I'd do something inside. Uh, today I'm going to replace a light switch, dimmer switch, for our hallway light. So you can see when you turn it off, nothing really happens. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. One of the first things we're going to do is go down to the breaker panel in the basement and make sure we shut the power off to that circuit. Okay, we're at the breaker panel. We open it up. We find that this is the breaker that controls that circuit. So we're going to go ahead and shut it off. And then we can go back upstairs and get all of our tools and supplies ready. As you can see, the power is off to the light. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we've got all of our tools and supplies ready over here. So what we're going to need to replace that switch is obviously the new switch the instructions, a new cover plate, some wire nuts, electrical tape, box cutter, screwdrivers, wire strippers, and one of the most important ones is an electrical circuit tester. This will tell us if there's power going to that switch to make sure the breaker actually did its job and turned off the power. So we're going to go ahead and remove the faceplate on this one. This is a screwless design. We're replacing it with a standard screw-in. So this one just pulls right off. We're going to go ahead and loosen the screws and hold the switch into the outlet box. Go ahead and pull out our switch, pull out the wiring, we're going to take our circuit tester, turn it on, go ahead and test the terminals. Now in case the breaker had failed and hadn't shut the power off to the circuit, the electrical tester would have made a noise like this to let you know that there's still power flowing through there. Now some are different, some have lights, some make beeping noises, some have different sounds, but that's the sound that this one makes. So we know that that power is shut off to that circuit so we can continue working on it safely. Now on this particular design of switch, we're just going to cut the wires right off using our wire stripper. Go ahead and snip, 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 and snip. Now the nice, this is a three-way switch. So it's controlled by two different switches, one in our kitchen and one in our hallway. The nice thing about replacing one is that the configuration is exactly the same. All we have to do is put the new wires on. It's not like we're adding in a switch. One of the first things we're going to do now is take our wire stripper and strip off about a half an inch of wire. It's important to know the correct gauge wire you're using so that you can use the correct space on the wire stripper. Now the gauge on all the wires is written on it somewhere in black ink. And in this case, this is a 14 gauge multi-strand wire. Sometimes you have to twist it a little bit. To break the coating. So we go ahead and remove the little sticker that covers the third terminal in case you're going to use this as a single pole switch, in which case it wouldn't have another switch for this light. It would just be one switch for this light. But since this is a three-way switch and we're going to use it as a three-way switch, we go ahead and remove that sticker. And you loosen up your terminals. 
Alright, an important thing to note on this switch is that on the top of it, it actually says the word top. Now that'll come in handy because you don't want to put a switch in upside down because it'll turn off when it should turn on and your dimmer will be reversed. So make sure that you look at the part that says top and put it in correctly. Now, with typical electrical wiring, your black wire is your common wire. And on this, it actually says the words common. I don't know if it's going to come across in the camera, but it says the word common. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. We're going to take our screwdriver, and tighten that up. That's nice and snug. Then we're going to take our electrical wiring here for the three-way. Stick that in there. And again, take our screwdriver. Tighten that up. And do it for the last one as well. And it's connected. Nothing that's left is our grounding wire, which is always green. So okay, we'll go ahead and put that in there. And go ahead and tighten that up. All right, now that all the wires are connected, we can go ahead and push the wires back into the electrical box. And again, making sure that the word top is in fact on the top. And you don't put it in backwards like I almost just did. I'll take our screwdriver. Now you don't want to tighten the top or bottom all the way at once. You want to do them both a little bit at a time so that you don't put the switch in at an angle and then it pinches on the electrical box. Take your cover plate and your screwdriver. And again, you want to make sure that you don't tighten one up all the way. You want to do them both together and you have it fully installed. Okay, we've turned the power back on at the panel and ready to test it. And it seems to work. Now the test will be to see if it turns on and off at the other switch as well. And it turns on from the other switch as well. And there you have it. That's how to replace a three-way light switch. Very easy, very simple, and you can do it in just a few minutes. Thanks for watching.